Could diapers soon be cheaper? We take a look at one Senate bill which could eliminate the sales tax on diapers. And a first of its kind partnership is hoping to help keep you safer. Who is involved and how they plan to help coming up. Plus, we are tracking a blast of Arctic air next week. Those details coming up as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. A bill has been proposed that would eliminate sales tax on diapers throughout the Commonwealth and has already garnered bipartisan support. WIMT's Madison Carmus spoke to officials with LKLP Head Start about what this could mean for low-income families. Diapers are something that are a necessity for families that have children that are not potty trained. But the price of that necessity is something that only adds to family struggles to provide for their family. Justin Collett, the director of Head Start at LKLP, says in the event that this bill is passed, families in the Commonwealth will have the opportunity to reallocate funds and spend money on other things to better their children's lives. So that would definitely increase their confidence being able to provide for their family. And uh, from the time a child is born until if they're potty trained at the age of four, and uh, they went through 11,000 diapers. So uh, it really adds up. Officials with LKLP remind folks that the price of diapers adds up over time, especially when a family is already struggling to make ends meet. But for now, in Perry County, Madison Carmouche, WYMT Mountain News. Thank you, Madison. LKLP adds that when parents are struggling to afford diapers, there are little to no resources available to them. We will have more from officials with LKLP tonight at 6. A bill that would move Kentucky's constitutional office elections to the same years as presidential elections is moving through the General Assembly. Bills like Senate Bill 10 have been heard numerous times, but it has failed to get enough traction to pass. Senator Christian McDaniel told lawmakers he's trying again and says this bill will benefit voters and save the state millions of dollars. People are getting less and less interested in our statewide races. Turnout was down over 8% this year. Uh, it, in, in 2023 than it was in, in 2019. Nowadays with national division, with presidential elections lasting for years and eating up the airwaves, I think it's really important that the people of Kentucky have space to uh, focus on Kentucky issues. The bill passed with a vote in committee seven to one. It will now go on to the full Senate floor. It has also previously passed the full Senate, but has had trouble in the House. Yesterday, we told you about House Bill 5, another provision of the Safer Kentucky Act, focuses on illegal camping. The bill would add to the state's stand your ground law, giving property owners the ability to confront such illegal campers with a gun or other force and not face consequences. Certainly don't want to <clears throat> suggest that an entire population is like that, but among the unsheltered homeless population is a high risk element for uh, panhandling, petty crime, and things that generally endanger the public and public health with things like feces on the sidewalk, uh, used drug paraphernalia. The bill would also make illegal camping a misdemeanor punishable by up to 30 days in jail and possibly a $5,000 fine. A first of its kind partnership between the ATF and Bluegrass Crime Stoppers is working to make Lexington safer. As Samantha Valentino shows us, it's a new initiative focused on solving cases involving stolen firearms. As we turn the corner into 2024, one of ATF's top priorities is focusing on the sources of crime guns. Special agent in charge of ATF in Kentucky, Sean Morrow, says in Lexington, stolen firearms are a major source of crime guns. And our investigations have shown that these thefts directly contribute to violence on our streets. That's why the ATF is partnering with Bluegrass Crime Stoppers to get stolen firearms off the streets of Lexington. We're going to offer $1,000 for any illegal gun, uh, recovered stolen gun, 
and that is going to be matched by the ATF's initiative of $1,000. If an arrest yields more than one firearm, an additional $500 will be added to the reward. But how often are guns really stolen in Lexington? There were 475 guns were, were reported stolen in 2023. Uh, 411 of those 475 guns were stolen from a vehicle. Chief Lawrence Weathers says these statistics show that public safety is the responsibility of everybody in the community. Something as simple as removing a gun from your vehicle and locking it away. Something as simple as that can save somebody's life. Through this partnership, they're not only asking gun owners to safely store their firearms, but they're also asking all community members to help police by submitting tips. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. To submit an anonymous tip to Bluegrass Crime Stoppers, visit bluegrasscrimestoppers.com. We are tracking some cold and cloudy weather across the mountains on this Wednesday afternoon. Let's take a live look in southwest Virginia from UVA wise. That current temperature sitting at freezing at 32 degrees. So we are cool on this Wednesday under a cloudy sky. Most of us right now in the middle to upper 30s up to 39 for Manchester, 37 for London, 35 in Jackson, also Pikeville at this hour. So we are tracking some well below average weather. We should be in the middle 40s. We're about 10 degrees below that in some areas on this Wednesday. End up on the radar after some snow showers early this morning. We are tracking some drier weather to continue into this afternoon. Also this evening up on first alert pinpoint Doppler a clean sweep and again that will stick around into tonight. Also for your Thursday as high pressure takes over some really nice weather on the way tomorrow. We stay dry and sunny. Those temperatures also warmer in the upper 40s and lower 50s and soak up the sunshine because more wet and windy weather is on tap by Friday. We could see winds up to 30, 40 or 50 miles per hour. Once again, also some extremely cold weather by Sunday and into next week. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Olivia. Cameron, thank you. And now let's go overseas to a shocking scene in Ecuador, a South American country where there's been an alarming spike in gang violence. Men with guns broke into a, the studios of a TV station there, taking several staffers hostage before police arrived. We should mention the video may be disturbing. As Manuel Bojorquez reports, it's the latest in a series of violent attacks. Cameras were broadcasting live when masked men firing guns and waving apparent explosives stormed one of Ecuador's state-owned TV stations Tuesday. The crew was ordered to the ground while an anchor was told to relay this message. National police flooded the area, arresting 13 people. The attack happened just a day after Ecuador's new president declared a 60-day national state of emergency. For years, Ecuador was a drug transit country. There was a surge in demand for cocaine around the world after the pandemic. Will Freeman is a fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. Uh, so you all of a sudden had Ecuador emerge as this very valuable turf to control. Locals have experienced a sharp increase in violence including a series of explosions and police abductions within the past few days. The crime wave kicked off after notorious gang leader Adolfo Macias went missing from his prison cell over the weekend for the second time. Nosotros no vamos a negociar con terroristas. We've seen attacks today in Ecuador uh, using terrorist tactics that uh, really have no precedent in Latin America since the days of Pablo Escobar. Could the turmoil mean that more Ecuadorians will try to get into the United States? Well, it's already happening. We're already seeing uh, a surge in migration from Ecuador, which uh, the country hasn't experienced for 25 years. And I really only see it adding to the pressures on the U.S.-Mexico border. And while before, CBS News, Miami. U.S. and British naval forces shot down 21 drones and missiles fired by Yemen-based Houthis on January 10th towards international shipping lanes in the Southern Red Sea, the United States said. Britain's defense minister said it was the largest attack in the area by the militants to date as the three-month-long war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza spills over into other parts of the Middle East. 
The Palestinian death toll in Gaza is climbing after Israeli airstrikes. A hospital there says it treated dozens of casualties. Dr. Anas Al Qasim spent time working in Gaza and says the health system was worse than he expected. I think it is uh, worse than what I expected, to be honest with you. I mean, I've been in Syria, I've been in Aleppo. There has been bombardment even on hospitals. I worked in a basement uh, when the building was bombarded. But uh, the intensity of the, of the airstrikes, the highly populated area of Gaza being, uh, you know, four by 10 kilometers being bombarded on, on a daily basis with some bombs. I'm hearing, hearing 1,000 kilogram. Uh, I think I've seen way more injuries than what I've seen in, in, in uh, Syria. Particularly, we're talking within three months. That's quite intense. The World Health Organization is stressing that it cannot afford to lose the remaining operational hospitals in Gaza, warning the enclave's healthcare sector is collapsing at a rapid pace. Coming up as First at Four continues from remote control cars to flying taxis, we take a look at the latest high tech vehicles. Plus, we are gloomy this afternoon, but the sunshine is not far away. Those details coming up after this break.